Hi, and uh, welcome to my YouTube channel, The History Squad. I'm here in the centre of England, in my home county of Warwickshire, with the Oxford household, the reenactment household for the Wars of the Roses. I've got Steve Arnold, and I've got my son Josh, who've been helping me. But I'm on my own at the moment, because I'm going to show you Steve's pavilion, his tent uh, that he takes when he's on his reenactment campaign. And it's very roomy. Yeah, very roomy indeed. This is... Um, quite something really it would be i say a status person a really you know high-ranking man at arms You've got a nice what i would call roadkill but essentially a boar skin yeah with the boar head but you've got to laugh at what's at the front door here this it's a piss pot for a man this is a piss pot for a woman because it fits perfectly for a woman. So let's go inside, have a look. Right, you see how these are all put together. They're, they're quite substantial and they can really take a storm. I can tell you I've been in them. Here we have a double bed. Now this one is on slats. Some of them were on rope and the rope, they tightened it so as to make it secure. So the palliasse, the mattress sat on it, the straw mattress. And that's where we get the old saying is, in England they say, sleep tight, don't let the bed bugs bite. And that's, they've been tightened up so it doesn't sag. And of course the bed bugs, whoa. What we have here is a collection of cooking knives. All that you need for working in the kitchen, cutting up your vegetables, but they are valuable. So they are kept in their own leather case. This is one of the kind of things that a soldier, a common soldier, might take as booty, plunder, because he could either take it home, present it to mummy, or he could sell it at a, pro at a profit. You have horn spoons here, as well as a pewter spoon, and a very fine set of eating utensils, a fine eating knife, a pricker, and a matching spoon. How lovely is that? Get him out, look at that, how lovely. So, spoon back in there, knife in. Once again, something a soldier would value. And the chest that they keep so many things in. Over here, different cups. And there's an interesting thing here that I've learned from Jim the Pot, Trinity Potteries. This has been double fired and it's heavy yeah compared to this cup which is glazed this is really heavy and it's to do with tax if you were exporting pottery you'd be taxed but because these were heavy they could be put at the bottom of the ship and used as ballast you didn't pay tax on ballast just a little interesting thing heavier the pottery put it down below used as ballast wooden plates oh now any children watching hide their eyes this is for sauce now have you ever wondered where we got the word saucy there you go enough said now people talk about these all the time yeah square square meal in the navy we don't know what that's for people say it's for salt we don't know for sure right now we have jugs this one is a very high status piece decorated and glazed this very very special and uh, above my head somewhere candles this is how they're made they're made in pairs so they can be dipped these are wax candles very expensive something that kind of gets my goat is in the films you see hundreds of candles burning away no incredibly expensive and the candles were like this, right? Wax candles. And on top of this chest, you have glassware. Your common soldier would never see this. He would never experience holding such a beautiful thing. For a fine wine, perhaps. The way the glass goes around, it's wound around. This, I've actually never handled any of these and they are quite beautiful. 
and the chests that all of these on are all carved. Here we have um, George and the Dragon, that kind of thing. We have saints, we have Mary Magdalene over there and because he's the boss, he's an important man at arms, he's got an important chair which I've never sat in before. This chair is really comfortable. I like this. I can imagine myself pontificating over others. Yeah, who'd listen to me? Now, two interesting things. I've got a chafing dish here and it's been repaired. Exactly how they used to repair broken pottery. Chafing dish, you put hot coals in there, put it inside your tent and it will give you a little bit of warmth without having a naked fire in here. Now, here we go. Have a look at this. Did they have spectacles way back then? Oh yes they did. Yeah, especially if you're a monk and you're in the scriptorium. Especially if you're a doctor and you needed to magnify. Most men at arms wouldn't need these because they couldn't read or write. They paid somebody else to do it for them. Well, isn't this great? Well, I hope you've enjoyed our video showing you the inside of the tent and the property of a, a good man at arms. If you did, do us a favour. Like, share and subscribe. If you're already a subscriber, hey, thanks a bunch and keep the comments coming because we do really enjoy going through them. And a special shout out to two of our Patreon members. We have Patrick Morin and Chase Dixon. So thank you very much for your time. Bye for now.